On this North Shore News, find out about a one in a million lottery ticket that was sold right here in Hammond and how a new apartment complex planned for Mandeville is causing controversy. North Shore News starts right now. Welcome to North Shore News. I'm Mackenzie Fletcher. And I'm Alexis Genovese. A $1 million winner got their lucky lottery ticket from a local gas station right here in Hammond. The $1 million Mega Millions Match 5 prize ticket was bought from the Quickway on West University Avenue by Charles Polk of Brookhaven, Mississippi. Polk won a grand total of $1.35 million, and the quick way where the ticket was purchased received a selling bonus of $10,000, or 1% of the total price. Polk's win was the 15th Mega Millions ticket sold in Louisiana, worth more than $1 million since 2011. The annual Hot August Nights event hosted by the Downtown Development District in downtown Hammond was newly rebranded this past year. Now called Hot August Stroll, the annual event still includes all the same events from previous years, but now visitors get to enjoy the event all day long. Previously held in the evening, this all-day affair is designed to enhance support for local small businesses in downtown Hammond. Election season is finally upon us, and North Shore News recently got the opportunity to speak with Attorney General candidate Liz Baker Merle. Merle stressed the importance of young voters participating in elections. Well, I think the first thing I'd say is go out and vote. You know, I mean, the first step of engagement in our, in, in life and governance and your taking control of your life and your future is being a voter. So it's really, really important and I would say go out and vote. Um, I think we want to make life in Louisiana a place where you want to stay, where I want to stay, and where my grandchildren want to, where, where my kids want to raise their grandchildren. Merle is a Republican candidate who is in the runoff election for Attorney General against Democratic candidate Lindsey Cheek. North Shore News also got the latest updates of election winners and runoff candidates in our area. Starting off with the governor of Louisiana, Jeff Landry won this election by a landslide with an approval rating of almost 52 percent. William Billy Nungesser takes the Louisiana lieutenant governor's seat with an overall 65 percent approval rating. The secretary of state seat is still undecided between Democrat Gwen Collins Greenup and Republican Nancy Landry. Runoff election voting will take place on November 18th. The Louisiana Children's Discovery Center partnered up with the Hammond Downtown Development District on October 25th to host a spectacular trick-or-treating event for kids in downtown Hammond. Kids and their families first stopped at the Children's Discovery Center to pick up their goodie bag full of treats and get their map to begin their trick-or-treating. Children had the chance to tour a Hammond fire truck and enjoy treats from vendors in the area. A total of 29 local businesses participated in this event, dressing up in their best costumes and handing out candy to children that attended. The event was designed to allow kids to have a good time and show what all the local businesses in downtown have to offer. All the local businesses are able to participate in this function to where um, we have maps to where all the kids know where all the stops are for them to go and uh, get some candy or some treats. But it's also for the parents and the adults to kind of go around to all the different businesses in downtown Hammond to see what they have to offer. If it is, uh, you know, real estate, if they're uh, food and beverage, if it is clothing, anything that they have, the businesses are able to participate. So it kind of gets everybody to see what downtown Hammond has to offer for everyone, not just the adults but also for the kids. Meanwhile, in Mandeville, homeowners have been in an uproar for the past few months over a proposed multi-use, high-density housing complex for the elderly. Maxwell Sajud has more on this story. Move towards a vote. Uh, Ms. Shear, if you'll please call the roll. Jason Buckerman. Against. 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 And against. Oh. 
After several meetings and a long wait, the city of Mandeville had its final meeting over whether or not to allow a new multi-unit apartment building on the lakefront next to the causeway. The project, known ubiquitously as Suzette Harbor, would have been a massive undertaking not seen anywhere else in Louisiana. By the time it got down to an application uh, in 2022, 2023, it morphed into a 200-unit apartment complex, an 80-unit hotel, a restaurant, an event center, a marina, and maybe some little commercial, all on 15 acres of ground. The project has been a contentious topic for homeowners. Advocates for the project, such as the Tammany Parish Corporation and Visit North Shore, see it as a chance to boost the city's revenue, but skeptics view it as the beginning of a slippery slope of looser zoning rules, more noise pollution, and traffic, and all with an uncertain plan for execution. You've got the pitch and the average and the this and the that, and nobody really, at least for me, I never really got a clear idea of how big this sucker could really be, how high up it really is. Following a contentious meeting, an amended ordinance between the developer Woodward Interests and the Mandeville Zoning Commission was adopted, and it was agreed to cap the apartments at a 90-unit max. However, according to the developer, this would have made the project financially untenable. Uh, at a last meeting, there was discussion about... CEO William D. Hoffman emphasized the complexity and multifaceted nature of the project, in which every factor was dependent on the other. And because of this complexity, the firm cited that it was unable to draft a 90-unit version of the plan, saying that it would have been disingenuous to prepare a plan that they knew would have been financially untenable. Following Hoffman's plea, the Mandeville City Council stated that they would not revise the ordinance for a second time and that the meeting would proceed with the understanding that the apartment building would have no more than 90 units, despite the fact that there was no passable site plan prepared. The Mandeville City Council Speaker at Large, Rick Danielson, also elaborated that the vote was not in regard to the project itself, but the ordinance that would have allowed the project to begin. Hours of comments and questions by Mandeville residents yielded many statements by those opposed to the project. Only one resident had gone to the podium in support of the proposal, stating that the project would revitalize the waterfront from its post-Katrina era of dilapidation. The amended ordinance to permit the 90-unit version of the apartment complex was struck down in a unanimous vote and a surprise to many project opponents. According to Southeastern Engineering Professor Mohamed Zidan, the reasoning for the vote was simple. The pressure from the constituents that pushed at the end that they cannot, like there were too much resistance that they cannot, could not um, overcome. Okay, so they were trying to make it like look better or trying to make it like less problematic, but it seems that it wasn't enough. People were still refusing it. I believe it's uh, attractive for some people who are looking for a um, luxurious place close to New Orleans without the problems that we are seeing currently in New Orleans. Although the ordinance was rejected, Ernest Bjorgier of the Mandeville Neighborhood Association was not convinced that this would be the last attempt by the developer. The rules state that when a project like this is declined, which is what happened, uh, they have to wait a year before they can come back and refile it. And uh, I think everybody's motivated right now, and uh, the city may try to take steps to try to make sure this exact same thing doesn't happen again. I think it's gonna change with the natural expansion of the suburb of New Orleans, Greater New Orleans, Kenner, Metairie. Older people or people who have been there for before are resisting, but I don't think it's gonna last for long. Right. Eventually, there will be some breakthroughs. Yes. Reporting for North Shore News, I'm Maxwell Sajid. Following the rejection of the ordinance, Woodward Interest sued the Mandeville City Council in hopes of appealing to the courts to force the ordinance through. Coming up after the break, how robots may be changing the way you receive your food at Southeastern. And we'll look at the beginning stages of construction of an important building in the heart of campus. Stay with us. Dear moms and dads, we know it's not always been easy, and it's been a lot of hard work. What you have achieved here today is going to help us and our futures. It is why we are coming up on stage to collect your diplomas. Everything I do. 
love you all. No, it's true. Everything I do, I do it for When you graduate, they graduate. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free and supportive adult education centers near you. Even though we didn't grow up together, he's my favorite brother. Hey, sis. I'm the baby of the family, and he's the gentle giant. What you know about poor George? Man, please, that's a classic. You know when they say people Boy, are a rare breed? Yeah, he's that. I'm sorry, I'll be back in a few hours. Don't worry, sure, you know I'm for you. I know. Don't get the football. That was my favorite memory. He was always for you. This is a true story of me, Bridget Floyd, and this guy, George Perry Floyd Jr., my big brother. Welcome back. The long-awaited official start of construction on D. Vickers is finally underway. After Hurricane Ida devastated Hammond in 2021, the building received substantial damage. D. Vickers housed many classrooms on campus and was home to the Southeastern Theater Department. In addition to getting a full remodel, the new building will also house the Southeastern Channel and the KSLU radio station. The estimated completion time of construction will be in 2024. Dining services at Southeastern Louisiana University have presented a new way of delivering food around campus that could make grubhubbing your meal easier than ever. Aramark and Campus Dining Services have introduced new food delivery robots. When ordering through the Grubhub app from any participating restaurants at Southeastern, you can now have a robot pick up your food and bring it outside of any building on campus. The robots are equipped with sensors to avoid running into students and have an alarm that is activated if the bot is tampered with. The only way to unlock the robot is through the Grubhub app in order to ensure that food isn't stolen or compromised. Though the robots have not been given any official names, students have begun to playfully refer to them as grubbies. There are currently eight robots on campus, although more are planned to be integrated if the university receives positive feedback. 2022 in the early portion of 2023 has been historical for the Southeastern Lions with so many stories that need to be shared. Eric Brignac takes a look at one man's effort to preserve sports history. It's been over 70 years since the Southeastern Athletic Program was born. After 28 years of Lion sports, another chapter in Larry Hymo's life is being written. Well, I spent most of my life at Southeastern, it seems like, but uh, nothing had ever been done on the history of Southeastern athletics. While Hymo's days of working as a university sports information director are gone, his memories from his days on the job are still fresh. Hymo decided to document and capture these decades of thrilling sports memories in a new book, 70 Years Southeastern Lions Athletic History. And uh, first of all, it just started out to be a writing project. I just wanted to get it down, get it on paper, if nothing else, run it off and, on the computer and, and give it to the archive so they'd have something. And the further I got into it, I had some people encouraged me to try to do it to a book. So eventually it did turn into a book. During his time at Southeastern, Hymo's contributions to sports journalism eventually earned him a spot for distinguished journalism in the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. All of us are on an equal basis in the Sports Hall of Fame, though. And I became the third line Roar sports editor. People don't realize that. Not only did Larry Hymo account for the stories and records the Lions sports programs have, he also covered a milestone that he knows off the back of his hand. Go back to the 1970s, we, the baseball team was in a Division II World Series. Uh, men's, bas uh, men's track team won a national championship in AI, and two years later the women's uh, basketball team won a national championship. So the 1970s, I call it the golden decade. Mr. Hamel did his own research and funded this project by himself. He made sure to preserve the historical accounts that laid the foundation of opportunities for the program's future. You know, giving everybody an opportunity to participate and compete at this at the high level, I think is awesome. And you see it culminating with our women's basketball going to the, you know, the tournament this year, and softball and volleyball and soccer. I mean, 
we just got our women's sports are really good and uh, you know they're competitive and we and I think our coaches do a good job with them but I think when you look back it's uh, uh, it, it's something that was much needed at the time and it's going to continue to grow and we'll continue to grow it oh here at Southeastern Lions fans can purchase this special story of Southeastern sports at the Southeastern Union Bookstore. Reporting for North Shore News, I'm Mary Brignac. If you're interested in reading Southeastern Lions athletic history, you can check out a copy at the Southeastern Library. Every day thousands of kids start vaping. And I can't let this happen to my kid. Of course, it's awkward to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping. Hey, bestie. How sketch is ready? It's hard to get their attention. Ready? Go. Yes. Look at that. You, you, you didn't turn yours over. So if you want to talk to your kids about the dangers of vaping, you have to get it trending. Right, backpack kid? Let's do it. First, invite your kid to do the vape talk. Let's try this. All right. Why is he here? Yeah, I gotta get it trendy, no. honey. Come on. Let's go. Oh, honey, can we talk? Yeah, what's up? I see a lot of your friends vaping. Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. Most hiring algorithms would scream me out. Some bosses couldn't see me as a leader. I've run this place for 20 years, but I still need to prove that I'm more than what you see on paper. I've been running code as long as I've been able to reach a keyboard. This is what I do. It's second nature for me, coordinating 100 details at once. It's the way my mind works. I have a very mechanical brain. I sold them on my skills. You gotta be so good they can't ignore you. My magic is... Analytics important. and empathy. That's how I'm getting clients. You have to have the confidence in yourself to show up and defy the odds. I'm more than who I am on paper. I never got a college degree. And today, I'm the CEO of my own company. People want to tell me I'm one in a million when actually I'm one of millions. Stars are all around us. It's time for them to shine. Welcome back. One club on Southeastern's, camp Southeastern's campus recently celebrated their one year anniversary. Reporter Eric Brignac covered their journey from the beginning and how they've grown to be the second biggest Chi Alpha club in Louisiana after a 27 year hiatus. Students gathered at Southeastern Louisiana University's Pennington Center to celebrate the return of a very special organization on campus. I was in college trying to find any job that would make me a lot of money, um, but I realized that that would never satisfy me. And God, um, when he gripped a hold of my life, he called me into full-time ministry. After 27 years hiatus, Chi Alpha returned to Southeastern's campus and students are gathering together to make new friends while growing in their faith. I came into college really nervous that I was going to lose my relationship with God by getting in with the wrong crowd or people that didn't serve Him. And then I met Austin who then introduced me to Julia and she encouraged me to become a part of Chi Alpha. Before having this room filled with a sea of people, the SLU Chi Alpha re-founders faced the challenge of connecting with others in an unfamiliar environment. We got to a campus we knew nothing about. We were coming from Louisiana Lafayette with a completely different culture, and we had to understand the culture of Southeastern. But one of the beautiful things about this campus is the union is truly the heart of the, the campus. After a year of building their organization, Southeastern's Chi Alpha reached an unprecedented mark of becoming the second largest Chi Alpha in Louisiana. They're second to the University of Louisiana. I feel like from an outside perspective, it's like, oh, wow, look what Austin and Julie and Darren and Matthew did. But honestly, all I can say is look what God did. Seeing students coming together and hearing their growth and change within their testimony is music to the supporters ears. This is Eric Brennerick reporting for North Shore News. If you're interested in learning more about Southeastern's Chi Alpha and how to join, follow them on Instagram, Instagram at SLU Chi Alpha and ask to get connected with one of their leaders. The Wooden Boat Festival in Madisonville 
recently celebrated its 32nd year along the Chifuncta River on October 14th and 15th. The festival offered numerous events and fun activities for children of all ages, while wooden boats floated along the river. The event was hosted by the Maritime Museum, Louisiana, and included over 100 classical wooden and spectator boats along with music enthusiasts for the two-day festival. This event drew in many guests who were excited to cruise down the river. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of North Shore News. You can visit www.thesoutheasternchannel.com for more news on the North Shore or tune in to our next episode. I'm Mackenzie Fletcher. And I'm Alexis Genovese. Thanks for watching.